very much for coming on a really dreadful night. Much appreciated. Applause for you. Um, I'm Bethany Reeves, and I'm the voice teacher and choir teacher and Shakespeare person here. And um, those, those are my things. Some theater in the summer. Uh, and Carl, who runs a whole bunch of this stuff uh, administratively and to some extent artistically as well, is back there running a, a video. So I hope I'm talking to the people who are going to watch this online. I'm so sorry some of you were not able to make it due to the weather and are probably sitting there looking at your students' shoes and performance outfit going, oh, how sad that I couldn't get there and hand this off. But it's all good. Life goes on. And welcome online or present. Either way. Um, I would like to ask everybody, please turn just make them go away, I beg of you. At the very, 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 very least, please turn the volume completely off. Though please be aware that little glowy screens as you're trying to take pictures um, are, are really disturbing to the people around you and can distract the singers. So, so out of courtesy, we do ask you not to do this. This is being fully taped and YouTubed and the whole nine yards. Ah, uh, okay, what else do I need to tell you? If you don't know yet, the restrooms are right out the hall and just <coughs> that way. First the men's and then the women's. Uh, we did the phone thing. Ah, I would like to introduce our accompanist for the evening, Stephanie Sofko. <laughs> Okay, to open our recital tonight, we're going back to the world of Baroque opera and Giulio Cesare by Handel, who some of you may know as the composer of The Messiah, or uh, the big oratorio from Whence Comes, Hallelujah, the Hallelujah Chorus, uh, one of the more famous choral numbers out there in the world. He also wrote a whole bunch of opera in late Baroque style in Italian. And um, there, there are a couple of fun things about late Baroque opera. One is it was frequently about stories from the ancient world. For instance, the love affair between Julius Caesar and Cleopatra, queen of Egypt. So we're going to have a happy love duet between those two. And one of those two is being sung by a mezzo-soprano, because back in the day, Fun and terrifying fact about Baroque opera, those roles, the heroic male roles, were usually written for castrati. And that's exactly what it sounds like. It's, they were written for male singers who had been altered before puberty and had soprano voices as when, when they grew up. Um, very powerful soprano voices, apparently. Nowadays, not so much with that. Um, nowadays, these roles are sung by countertenors, mezzo-sopranos like we have today, and sometimes baritones or tenors. But usually you want that, the, that treble sound. So this is caro bella, which means dearest and beautiful one. And the text is repetitive. It's a happy, oh, you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. You are so delightful. Nothing's better than your face. Um, things are going well for these two at this point in the opera. And our Cleopatra is Bella Cruz, Isabella Cruz. Bella, Bella, I mean, she, yeah. it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. And um, Kaylee Cubitt is our mezzo soprano.
1940s to the South Pacific, or Broadway, however you want to think about it. Um, the musical South Pacific, a classic by Rodgers and Hammerstein. To This Nearly Was Mine, a ballad of lost love. The good news is uh, love doesn't remain lost. It all ends sort of happily. Um, there's some hard-hitting stuff in this musical, but at least for this character, it does ultimately end happily. Um, at this moment, he doesn't know that, and Christopher Hawker will sing it for us.
It's one of the best love of the classical, 20th century classical song sets. And the opening song is The Vagabond, and Robert Olson is going to sing it.
uh, we go back to Broadway and to a, a first of a couple of love songs that we have coming up. Uh, in The Music Man, which, by the way, I just saw the revival on Broadway, and I gotta say, it's terrific. Hugh Jackman. Oh, you saw it? Oh, you wish you did. <laughs> yeah, Hugh Jackman is born to play that role. I still can't believe he became famous to be Wolverine. He's in his old theater guy. <laughs> anyway, um, Till There Was You is the climactic song for the heroine of the piece, Miriam the Librarian, who puts it off and puts it off and puts it off and puts it off and finally realizes, oh, all right, I'm in love with this guy. Stella Corabesis is Marion. <laughs> Oh 
have our second wanderer of the evening. When the Air Sings of Summer is from the American one-act opera, The Old Maid and the Thief by John Pablo Manotti. Um, some of you might know Amal and the Night Visitors, which is a popular, popular Christmas piece of his. Um, the, the character is Bob. He's the putative thief, except he's not a thief. It's a whole thing. You, you don't want to know the plot line. But basically, <laughs> he is a handsome, young, itinerant, a hobo guy during the Depression. He's not the first. We have some later in the program, too. Uh, and, and he happens into a small town come winter, and a couple of elderly, unmarried ladies go, woo, and take him in for the winter, and the young maid is after him, and he's just having a grand old time. But once the, uh, once the weather starts to turn warm, he, he's got his itchy feet telling him to hit the road again. So, Nicholas Hyde is Bob when the air sings of summer. Maria, I'll 
I'll never stop saying Maria. with her tutor, um, and she has feelings about that. Zoe Hack, soprano. I could have danced all the 
Uh, we are going to give you a quintet from the opera The Tenderland, which, like The Old Maiden with Thief by Minotti, um, was originally written for television. In the early days of television, they were trying, they were doing all kinds of experimental things. Um, the original Cinderella by Rodgers and Hammerstein was written for television. Um, and these are all like in the 50s. Uh, so it was, it was a brave new world of what can we put on this small screen? And some smaller operas, operas were written for it. Uh, I don't think the Tenderland actually ever made it onto the small screen, but it became a one act opera that's got some beautiful music in it. Um, and the promise of living, a quintet, has become a choral favorite, and in fact, the Stevens Choir is singing it uh, as the opening of our fall concert. But originally, it's an opera quintet, and the characters are a farm family, um, a daughter and her mother, and grandpa. Grandpa's the bass. The bass always has to be grandpa. Opera rule, everybody. <laughs> so, so grandpa is the bass, um, and and two. You guessed it, itinerant wanderers. This is during the Depression, so they're itinerant farm workers, and they've stopped in, and they're being hired on to help bring in the harvest. And they've had a particularly beautiful day, uh, reminded that life can be good despite hardships, and they sing this quintet together. Singing it will be for us, Bella Cruz, Soprano, Kaylee Cubitt, Mezzo Soprano, come on up, you guys. Nicholas Hyde, and Charlie Beale as Grandpa. <laughs>
takes a yield. Are you ready to lend a hand?